We'll go back to occupied East Jerusalem and Shayna Lowe, a communications advisor at the Norwegian Refugee Council. Hi there, Shayna. Thank you for your time. So lots of concerns about the situation at El Shifa Hospital. Reports are Israeli forces um, have blown up tunnels beneath the facility. Do you know anything of the general state of the hospital now and who's inside? I haven't gotten any updates today about who's inside. My understanding over the last few days is that there were still some patients who were unable to be moved and, and some doctors who were there with them uh, taking care of them. But I don't have any information beyond what's what's already been reported. Well, give me your uh, reaction to the ceasefire, Sheena, and whether you think there'll be any major complications. Well, first of all, the people of Gaza have been under a tremendous amount of bombardments, uh, airstrikes over the last seven weeks or so. So we are relieved to know that at least there will be a temporary pause where people can can take some time to breathe. People can move easily or more easily that international organizations will be able to, to act. Humanitarian organizations will be able to access uh, will be able to access uh uh, areas that they haven't been able to access, but really four days is not enough to to have an effect as as effective a humanitarian response as we would like. Seven weeks of destruction will require more than just four days of humanitarian relief. The amount of relief coming in is nowhere near sufficient to to meet all of people's needs, and we desperately need more aid to go in, and we need this ceasefire to turn from one that's temporary into a permanent one. Uh, the only way that these issues are going to be resolved is politically. They cannot be resolved through military action. Uh, yeah, you've just repeated um, a statement by your organization, Norwegian Refugee Council Secretary General Jan Egeland, who said, quote, a pause of a few days is not enough time to address the immense needs after six weeks of fighting, bloodshed and destruction. Can you quantify that need uh, compared to the aid that's expected to enter in the next few days? You know, we're still at the state right now as humanitarian agencies of assessing what the needs are because we and our teams have not been able to be out in the field seeing what's needed. But what I do know is that the 200 trucks per day that are slated to go through are not sufficient to meet the needs. But it's impossible for us to know what the needs are because we haven't been able to access all areas of Gaza. And even despite this pause, we won't be able to access as, I, as international humanitarian organizations all areas of Gaza as the north uh, Northern Gaza and Gaza City is still re restricted uh, to from from civilian entry. At this point in time, I wouldn't believe Egypt is letting just anyone out of Gaza. Um, if that does indeed happen, do you expect a regional refugee crisis? This is something that we're extremely worried about, especially as we've heard that Israel, after four days, plans to to restart its its uh, escalation and or, and and reengage and expand its ground operation uh, into southern Gaza. There is no space in Gaza for people seeking shelter to flee, and we are very much worried that there will be a continued forcible transfer of Palestinians inside of Gaza and the potential for mass deportation outside of Gaza. That's why we desperately need the international community to push for this ceasefire to hold, for it to become something permanent, to prevent further displacement. We've already seen 1.7 million Palestinians internally displaced in Gaza. Gaza, they cannot be displaced outside of Gaza either. Really appreciate your contribution here on TRT World. That's uh, Shane Lowe, communications advisor, the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you.